All right. Well, good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining. How's everybody? Good. <laughs> I take it as positive. Um, so today it's the tech committee running the uh, meeting this morning, and we would like to say thank you to everybody. Uh, real quick before we get started, everybody who's on here, I just want to point out something, and I'm not to be political in any sense of the word, but in a couple of days, it'll be September the 11th. And just want everybody to take time out that day just to remember those events that happened 19 years ago. So just pause that day and just remember the nation and remember, you know, that tragic event that happened, you know, during that time. So I uh, want to say thank you to all the uh, first responders and everybody, you know, still still support them. So having said that, the technical community is... Um, uh, here for you and available. We are looking for people to get involved and join our committee. Uh, we see the five fine folks that are before you right now. Uh, please join us. We're looking, you know, for anybody who's, eating, no matter what your experience is, join, help us out, help grow uh, the tech committee here at KWLE and, uh, you know, help support your fellow agents. So please get with either one of us members, you know, if you're interested. Um, thanks a bunch, Buckets Field. What, what's, what's, uh, <laughs> I threw you off there, Kevin. <laughs> In, instead of tell you something good, I was hoping to kind of make you oh, smile. Okay. With the bananas. That's, that's, okay, well, great. Well, um, it's a, it's a great day, it's a good day. So, uh, you know, instead of telling us something good, what have you done to fill your bucket? And maybe fill somebody else's bucket too. Fill somebody else's bucket. Yep. Well, Anyone. I don't know if he is on here or not, but I just want to give a shout out to um, Harry Borders. Um, we really, I mean, he is such a blessing to our office, and um, I just want to give him thanks. He is awesome. not, but I will pass it on to him. <laughs> We, we have the wonderful Jenny Fields on with us this morning. Oh, hey, Jenny. I love you too, Jenny. <laughs> Which, by the way, I've got some, I'm going to be making some of that stuff that you like so much, and I'll drop oh it off. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Marsha. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you have to share with everybody. But all right, anybody else? Anybody else? No buckets? You got a hole in your bucket? Um, it's it's not a bucket, but uh, football starts uh, this weekend, so that's something to be excited about. That, that is, that is, that's true, Adam. I agree. Anybody going to the games? Okay. Well. <laughs> Still waiting on you. I got to see tickets for UK, but they haven't announced what they're doing yet, so I don't know if they're going to let us come or if they're going to honor our tickets or not. And to what game is that? I said, I've got UK football season tickets. Oh, they haven't okay. announced what they're doing with their ticket situation yet, so I'm still in limbo. Yeah, because they're not playing any games, the SEC, so. Mm. Yeah. All right, well, if nobody else, go fill some buckets. <laughs> so we'd like to say happy birthday. Happy birthday to all the September babies, and that's the September the 9th, which will be today. Say happy birthday to Alex Rogers. Yay. Uh, Nick Pesco, September the 11th. Whitney Brown and Jennifer Hayden, Hayden on September the 14th. And September the 15th is Dustin Barnes. Happy birthday, everybody. All right. And we'd like to welcome Amanda Terry. Amanda, are you on the call? All Don't right. Well, her. she's here. Don't see her. All right, well, welcome Amanda to uh, Keller Williams. We look forward to seeing and hearing good things from you and her sponsor is Linda Cecil, so great. All right, well, Miss Jenny Fields, you are up. One of our favorites with uh, Harry, the Borders and Borders. Take hey away. guys, can everybody hear me okay? Kevin, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful, okay, so um, since today is a tech meeting, I thought we would spend some time talking about how technology has impacted closings recently. So there's a, a bunch of different things actually that are going on. So um, first of all, technology allows us to do closings a lot differently now. So we have Kentucky adopted at the beginning of the year, um, 
a law got passed the last General Assembly um, where Kentucky adopted a thing that allows what's called a remote online notary. And remote online notaries is different than just a Zoom closing. It is a really specific set of uh, software and, and um, information that you have to have where I can effectively through a Zoom or, or through some kind of media like that, I can contact somebody and um, be able to do a closing totally electronically. Um, it can be filed electronically. Everything can be done electronically. We have to verify their identities electronically. Um, there's some different ways that that happens. Um, and so, and that's really cool. I think that's a really great thing. Now, then COVID hit. And as of the time that COVID hit back in March, even though the law was effective January 1st, Kentucky did not have their stuff together. There was no way for you to apply to be able to be a remote online notary. Now that's changed and you can do it. But in the meantime, the governor issued um, an executive order that says we're under a state of emergency and the General Assembly passed a new law. And the new law that says that during the time of the emergency order, which we're still under, we can actually do notaries via Zoom, not via FaceTime, but via Zoom or another vehicle where you can record it. And so I could contact Kevin, um, set up a Zoom call with him, and he could, you know, give me evidence that he is really Kevin, you know, show me his driver's license and things like that. And then I can notarize things for him. So what they did was they actually changed the law to say that during this time of this emergency, gosh, guys, I'm so sorry. Um, sorry about that. So during the time of this emergency, we're going to say that, you know, because Kevin has to be in my physical presence, we're going to pretend like that Zoom is, is going to be defined now as my physical presence. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we can do these Zoom closings. Now, when they first came out, at first they said, you had, you know, Kevin had to be in Kentucky because I'm in Kentucky. And most of the title insurance companies and most of the lenders now do not have a Kentucky requirement. Many of them have a state requirement. So even though that's perfectly legal in Kentucky, um, you still have to follow the plan um, and make sure that the lender is okay with it and the title insurance is okay with it. So that's remote online notary, and that is also um, Zoom closings, which we're doing that now. So we can do that for anything that needs to get notarized. Powers of attorneys, closings, wills. Um, we've done a few Zoom wills, which is always a little weird to me. Um, but so there's lots of, it's a nice little tool to have in these uncertain times. So other stuff that's going on. So remote hey, Jenny, notary, yes. Can I ask a question about those? Sure. Do, do they need to be recorded? So you, right. that, you know, way you would have. Excellent question. Yes. Thanks. So if, if, if Kevin and I were going to do a zoom power of attorney today, so he was going to execute it. And actually with a power of attorney, it's kind of fun because we have to have witnesses. So I have to bring other witnesses to come in and, and watch him sign with me. Um, but then he has to physically get the document to me. Like I have to have the one that he signed. So he might overnight it to me, um, but I have to get that one to get it recorded because I'm going to have to put my notary on it eventually, right? I'm going to actually sign it and I'm just going to write notarized via electronic communication. Um, so yes, uh, does that answer your question, Kevin? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So with um, these remote online notaries, the first state that did them was probably about five or six years ago and it was Virginia. Okay, so I want to, we're not talking about Zoom closings, we're talking about the, what we're all going to eventually be doing with these remote online notary stuff, doing closings via, via notaries. Not all of them, but some of them. I still think it's fun to go to a closing. I still like it. So, um, but anyway, so um, you guys, if you've driven around and listened to the radio at all, have probably heard advertisements for home title fraud protection. You guys heard anything like that? Any kind of advertisement like that? Yeah, I've seen them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's what that is. That's different than title insurance. Title insurance goes backwards. And title insurance, um, you know, protects the owner from anything that occurred prior to their ownership. But title fraud is somebody um, recording a deed where you did not really consent to it. You didn't really sign it. It's totally fraud but they sell your property to somebody else and maybe they take the money from it. And now that other person goes and gets a mortgage on it. So when I started hearing these advertisements two or three years ago, I'm like, that's weird, man. I, you know, I'm pretty old. I've never heard this stuff before. What, what's changed? So here's what's changed. 
we started doing a lot of remote online closings across the country. And associated with that, apparently title fraud has ticked up at the same time. I think those things are related. And so you can actually buy an insurance policy that would help you unravel the mess if someone tried to sell your house out or, or they already did. Um, this happened in Louisville a couple of years ago. I got involved in it because a buddy of mine called me up and said, and I think I've told you guys the story, but they said, does my mom have to sell her house? And I'm like, well, no, your mom doesn't have to sell her house. Why would you think your mom has to sell her house? And he said, well, she's already done it. It's already happened. And I'm like, what do you mean? There's already a deed put to record. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. So his mom and dad owned this house. His dad had passed away. Somebody put to record a totally fraudulent deed with the dad who was passed away signing as well as the mom, which they didn't really do, and conveying it to someone else. So um, we were able to get that unraveled. You know, it just was a fortuitous set of circumstances where no major harm occurred. Um, but that's what, that's the kind of thing they're looking at with title fraud. Um, and that's going, that's going in the future. Okay. Now, everybody good so far? I can't, on Zoom, I can't get, you know, good responses. I can't see what, <laughs> what so everybody happy? Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about other kinds of fraud. When COVID hit, um, of course, we've all know about wire fraud. Wire fraud has been around for a long time, um, where fake information sent. We were all kind of very diligent about it. Um, but when everybody started doing closings remotely, um, there were a lot of email aways. There were people were here in Louisville, but they didn't want to physically come in. So they, they were, there was a lot more wires that occurred. And along with that came wire fraud. So wire fraud has definitely ticked up in the last four or five months substantially on a national level and on a local level. So just, just be aware, be extremely, extremely cautious about any kind of wired wiring instruction or wired, excuse me, emailed wiring instructions um, because the chances of them being, being, um, fraudulent are pretty good. I hate to say that, you know, um, it's, it, even if it's a one in 10 chance, that's a really high level. Okay. In addition, there have been payoff fraud. Our office experienced this where, um, somehow the, the email with the payoff information was intercepted and another, you know, another bank account was written in there. So it, instead of going to chase or whatever the lender was, it said chase with a different bank account. And fortunately, both of those situations, um, one, the wire got kicked right back immediately on the second mortgage there. It's in limbo. It's still in the process of getting kicked back, but because they're going through all their fraud procedures, it's taken a little bit longer, but you know, you wouldn't think about that. You know, maybe your, maybe your borrower sends you, your seller sends you a, a email with wiring instructions. You forward it on to the closing attorney and nobody thinks that at some point it could have been intercept, intercept, you know, accepted and they put in fake instructions. So anything you get via email, you got to be suspect of that has any kind of wiring instructions, whether it be a payoff or, or the proceeds or anything, be really, really hyper cautious. And that's why we send encrypted emails, which everybody hates, you know, and what I want to tell you guys is don't get in the middle of it. You don't need to be forwarding payoffs to anybody. You don't need to be um, forwarding wiring instructions. Make the closing attorney get back with the seller uh, or get with the lender. Make them do all, get that information. Make, make us bear that risk because I don't want you guys to be involved in any of that. Um, but it's, there's some cool, convenient things. You know, we just got to be ways about, you know, getting your money really quickly. And um, of course that's fantastic. And there's a lot of really good things about it. So I don't want everybody freaked out, but I don't want us to let our guards down either. So any questions for me? Hey, Jenny. Hey. Yes. hey Thank you, Jenny. Um, I, I've seen uh, a couple of advertisements. One actually came from Dot Loot and a couple of other uh, title companies that I know are doing um, electronic earnest money directly to the title company. Yep. Is that going to be something that um, we'll be able to use or coming soon? So um, here's, here's my beef with that. <laughs> it has nothing to do with electronic. I think that's great. Um, my, my concern about having the money go to the closing attorney is this, even when it's borders and borders, I don't care who it is, okay? 
if you look at the KRS 324, that's the statute, that's the section of, of laws that governs you guys, KRS 324. And there are very specific rules about how brokers put that money into their account and how brokers are allowed to take it out of that account, right? Um, they can take it out at closing. They can take it out upon written agreement by all parties. They can take it out on court order or they can take it out on a 60 day letter. Those are four things, okay? I'm not governed by KRS 324. I'm governed by the Bar Association. And the Bar Association tells me that I have to follow the, the legal directives of my client. And we all kind of operate that any closing attorney that's gonna be holding that money is gonna follow the same things and can send a 60 day letter and you know all that kind of stuff. But the truth is that's not necessarily the case, right? And on a cash transaction, I represent that buyer. That buyer wants that money back. I don't give that money back. Now we don't do it, you know, but there's a risk. You know, I'm, I'm putting my bar license in jeopardy by not following the lawful instructions of clients. You see the risk, see the problem? So now that being said, I love electronic stuff and being able to wire money. I think there's even, you know, I think there's like a Venmo type app that's out there that's got starting to get some um, use um, for. Have you guys seen that? Y'all heard about that? It's not really Venmo. I don't know what it's called. Do you, it, it's called, uh, it's, um, Oh my God, I, I just got an email for it. Uh, Ernest, it's called Ernest, I think. I think, yeah, that's something like Ernest. that. Or something like that, yeah. Um, yes, so I think that's awesome. And um, you can always forward that money. I think, I think that's how we're gonna be doing stuff for a long time. And so, um, and it'll be a lot easier than having to track down checks and whatnot. Any other questions for me? Anybody? Only once. <laughs> Yay! Well, well, we appreciate it, Jenny. It was a great job as always. Thank you very much. Have a great, great rest of the week. Talk you soon. too. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Let me walk around the corner and see what's going on with our flu shot clinic. All right. To uh, to our online correspondent in the office. <laughs> we take you to Amy, who's giving the update on the flu shots in the office. You have until 1 p.m. today, and it's courtesy of CVS Pharmacy. So if you're around the office or you want to head that way, please head by, stop by. Alyssa, are you on? I'm here in the office. Woohoo! Can, Can you hear us? Can you elaborate any on that? Oh, it's okay. Now, if, if I'm am I on? Uh, yes, you are on. I'm, I'm going to let her take over because my phone isn't as nice as hers. <laughs> Uh oh. Did he lose her? <laughs> uh, yeah. Isn't technology great? Technology is awesome. Yeah. awesome. All right. Well, yeah, I thought she no. was here. If, if she were here, she would say it's not too late. She's going to be here until one. And as I mentioned in the beginning, um, you can bring in a copy of your prescription card, even if you don't have insurance, and it should be covered. Um, if it's not covered, then it's a $39 fee, um, and they made it to where it doesn't hurt at all. So you can get your shot, and it doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> so come on in. All right, any questions about the clinic? All right, perfect. We're set up in the training room. All right. All right. Uh, a few quick housekeeping notes, sort of announcements for you guys. Um, if you have admin, admin mastermind, September 10th, that's tomorrow. 12 o'clock. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. Uh, going on to other additional announcements. Um, you know, this is quote the tech run meeting. So it's nice to know that we are have a plethora of videos and trainings for you guys through connect and other resources. And Amy, if you can go to the pivot. Uh, thank you. Uh, Four o'clock pretty much every day pivot shift ahead. Uh, the upcoming ones today, how I built this uh, profit share uh, tomorrow. Uh, build your agent to agent referral network. Um, I think if you're in command or you've probably gotten lots of requests for that, but have you ever sent any out? Uh, and then lastly, smart marketing for the solo agent and small teams with uh, Sue Adler, Amber Hart and Brady Sandahall. So check that out. And then moving on, 
There is the command training with Leroy Marketing. Uh, pretty much every day at one o'clock, you can see on the screen some of the ones that are coming up. Now, note that next week is Mega Camp, so no uh, one o'clock tech trainings next week because I'm sure everybody signed up for Mega Camp, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, another thing on this, Amy, uh, is this through Command or is this, uh, or just on Connect or do we have this on our YouTube page as well, a link? Um, it's just on KW Connect. So okay. if you're on your My KW page and you choose education, that's what takes you there. Use a little magnifying yeah. glass and put in a keyword and you can find it. Yeah. Uh, you can also find that in Command. Yeah. Click on yes. Connect. Right. So we are uh, all, you know, talking right now via Zoom. And what this video uh, that I watched and wanted to talk a little bit about is, you know, long-term remote operations, things through the pivot and what is going on. Some things will not be going quite back to the way they were. And a lot of us will be working almost permanently remotely or at a much higher percentage at home. And some of the things that they talked about to give you guys things to think about is, you know, as KW agents, you know, it's leads, listings, leverage. And the lead part is doing lead generation. And before a lot of people would be coming into the office and maybe in small groups or just have a little spot, they would hang out, uh, grab one of the tiny micro offices that were available and would spend two or three hours, you know, making their calls. Uh, that has changed. So, uh, one thing that this video talks about is that this small team and some of the other teams is a national office is they are doing Google Meets with other agents they're with and doing their lead generation via Google Meet. So they will make all their calls, all their lead generation for that determined amount of period, but they will go to Zoom or Google, Google Meet and unmute it so they can listen in on each other's conversations. They'll have each other uh, say, hey, listen to this conversation while I talk to this client and then give immediate feedback for learning. So I thought that was a really excellent tip for those of you who are struggling to either designate the, the times to do lead generation or are missing the opportunity to get feedback from others. So who here, by a quick raise of hands, has been very consistent with time blocking their lead generation since COVID started? Uh, I see one, two, yeah, not enough, right? Uh, those who raise their hands, do you have any tips or tricks that have uh, allowed you to stay consistent? Uh, I saw Sheree, I saw Lisa. Who else was there? For our team, it was doing just this, which was getting together and doing a Google Meet and everyone, or getting onto Zoom and everyone. Okay. She muted at the end. Oh, yeah, I muted there at the end. <laughs> I was too quick go. on the button. So yeah. this is how we did it for our whole team, was we did these uh, Google Meets and... Uh, so admin did one half and then the sales team did another half and we just all listen in on each other and query each other. Now we're back in the office, but that was how we did it while we were during our quarantine time. Did you find success doing that? We did. We did. In fact, we sped up instead of slowing down during the quarantine. Yeah, wow. That's excellent. So, so those of you working at home, it's not too late. Uh, find a couple people, uh, put something on the Facebook page and put, see if you can find some times that you can do lead generation at the same time and start doing it together. Um, so if you're, you're kind of struggling on the motivation bus at times due to everything going on, that is a great way to, uh, to find some people to help uh, pick you up and carry you along because that's what we do. So a couple other things is, you know, client contacts. We're not exactly having, you know, client parties, things like that uh, with COVID going on. And they talked about, you know, some of their client relationships and, you know, how they reach out for virtual hugs with their clients. Uh, some of the ideas that they had is they stayed uh, up on local companies that were doing hiring because with COVID, a lot of people were laid off. So doing job boards with your clients and reaching out and seeing who may be looking or needing positions, uh, even if, if it's their family and maybe their kids, things like that and reaching out to them and letting them know about additional job opportunities. Um, they sometimes they just simply ask what problems people were having. Uh, one of the things that they did, uh, it's a little late now, but this there'll be additional proper opportunities as the holidays go, is that they went to uh, the schools that were in their specific market where they do a lot of their sales and set up 
uh, photos for back to school for the kids because they weren't going to school. They were doing, you know, the at-home learning. So they gave the opportunity for their clients in the community themselves to come and get their photos taken um, and go and did it in a socially distant way. And they said they picked up like 50 or 75 additional contacts and leads um, from doing that. Um, something that never gets out of style is Popeyes. And right now with people learning from home, those with kids, you know, one of the things is that you could go by and take them some school supplies. You know, spend, go to the dollar store, spend five bucks, take them some crayons, things like that. Get the school supply list from the school where their kids go and take them a few things. And, and people really appreciate that. Um, so they were doing some virtual trivia nights and things like that with clients. So that was some of the ideas that they had. Um, and then lastly, they spent the end of the um, uh, training meeting uh, talking about ways to stay motivated and, and how they would use their calendar and how important it was in staying motivated to not blend the lines between their personal life and their professional life. You know, when it gets to that time of night, put the phone away. When it's time to work, you're doing your work. Um, and also separate your physical space. And sometimes that is how you're doing your Zoom right now might be on your laptop, but is that the same laptop your kids are using? Is that the same laptop that you're you know, doing your social media with and have different equipment and different things for your work and separate those spaces uh, to keep your things clearly defined. So that's some of the things I thought was really neat from that. I think it's a great watch. Uh, the team was doing, there was a team of six doing about $40 million a year last year and, and they have uh, increased their team and their volume this year through COVID. So it was really neat. So moving, any questions about that? Anything anybody is doing or has had any creative things that they've done since COVID to touch base with their clients that they've had success with? Are you just not, to give up your good, not giving up your best ideas, are you? <laughs> uh, so Adam, you mentioned that when you're working from home, it's good to signify an end of your day. And this touches on something that Debbie Frapp's training, the coaching that she just finished with us, um, that she talked about. And so one way that um, I have done it is if I'm at home, I'm actually closing my office door and I put a sign on it saying, don't open this door unless you're grabbing a book or something like that. Um, I know our OP, Cam Alexander, said that she transitions by closing her laptop physically. Just that action of closing it and saying, I'm done. Um, but whatever it is for you, just signify that you're finished working because it's really tough. Those, those lines are blended, but you've got to have something that says you're, you're allowed to stop working and rest. Uh, and, and if you have, you know, family at home, they will appreciate it. You know, get a little clothes for business sign, put it on top of your desk, cover it with a sheet, whatever you need to do to turn it off for the time, because you're spending so much time at home. It's that much more time, uh, important to do the opposite and then turn it off later. Yeah, if not, it's just going to add to stress. Yep. Absolutely. So moving on, uh, Mega Camp is next week. Quick show of hands. Who has signed up for Mega Camp? That's a good turnout. Oh, we got one over here. Yes. The, uh, and so it looked like 50% is not too late. Uh, if you're planning on signing up, I would do it today. I saw something that the prices go up tomorrow. So you will save money. Put it in your pocket. Buy yourself an extra lunch or something by signing up today and not waiting or procrastinating any longer. Uh, next week. Tuesday the 15th, you can see we're going to have a watch party. 10 o'clock food, right? I mean, who misses the meeting food, right? Let's do it on a Tuesday. Uh, Sweet and Savory will be here at 10 and then at 11 o'clock is the Gary Keller update. I think that is either an hour, or hour and a half long. I, I can't remember, just so you can kind of time block and thank our sponsors, uh, Home Membership and Ruoff Mortgage. Uh, so come hang out, see your realtor friends that you've been missing and not seeing as often as you would like. Um, and then also keeping things moving along. I was on a uh, invest, we did an investment for one of these for a buy and hold, I think is what it was a couple of weeks ago, which was incredible. It was one of the best ones with some of the most incredible agents we have here at Keller Williams. Uh, and it was awesome. So I'm expecting even better things on the next one. Uh, Suntos, if you don't mind talking a little bit about the upcoming one, that would be great. 
Sure. Um, as you mentioned, the last one was really a, a, a hit with a lot of people. So we're going to have another one with Gary Aronov, Scott Pinella, and Mike Fogel. Uh, they actually, all of them, have done uh, flipping uh, real estate. And so we'll talk about that. What are some of the, the, the pitfalls? What are some of the challenges? And how can people get involved? especially the newbies who are interested in getting started. We'll talk about flipping, we'll talk about wholesaling. And so it's, it's going to be a lot of information and it would be a lot of fun. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and, and that probably, I, I attend you, uh, excuse me, I uh, would go so you can ask questions at the time of filming, but that's also something that's usually recorded, right, Amy? It and is. Yep, it'll be on our YouTube channel. And just a reminder, if you go to YouTube, our name is KW Louisville East, all one word. And yep. lots and, of good training yep. there for you. Yeah, I actually was live on the last one and then went back and watched the recording as well. It's such good information for those of you who are looking to uh, find ways to invest. Because if you didn't know this, you do not have a 401k with your uh, KW Realtor license. What? Yep, no, no retirement, Hallie, sorry. The uh, So so you got to find a way to do it. And this is a great way. So. Yep. Um, Moving on, uh, looks like this is this is new to me. This is awesome. Yeah. I did not know about this yeah. for the meeting. This is incredible that um, John Borders is going to come. You may or may not be familiar with the article. I think it was in, was it in the journal as well. I think it was in the Courier Journal, um, and also put out through social media. Just an incredibly well thought out. Um, lots of historical references to the history of redlining and also local redlining here in Louisville. And he is going to bring that in person. Um, I think is, is it in person or just zoom? I It'll guess. be zoom, but he'll be, you know, on there with us and, yeah. and yeah. teaching and open for discussion around right. redlining. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if there, if you, you know, are going to go one zoom training this year, I recommend it to be this one. Um, it's so important to know your community with what we do. Do. and people look at us to be experts in our field and we can't be experts in our field without understanding what he's, he's going to talk about next week um, so uh, that that's it that's my plea yeah great information <laughs> uh, moving on uh, as Lisa is just absolutely brilliant with the tech I can't uh, oversell uh, her without still underselling her value to what she brings to uh, KW with her knowledge and how she helps out the tech committee. And Lisa was gonna spend a few minutes talking. So um, I don't see you on the screen, Lisa, but you're there somewhere. So Lisa, go ahead and get started. I'm here, uh, very few minutes. Um, I actually was uh, a little late to our meeting because I was meeting again with the regional tech trainer uh, and the other um, market center tech trainers. And we were trying to find ways to help everybody uh, with their businesses um, with KW technology, and I had another point that I was going to talk about, and something came up on that meeting that made me think um, maybe um, those of us who are going to be going to Mega Camp, um, our regional tech trainer um, is going to actually be hosting a. Uh, she, she's not like pinned it down, but a live question and answer session after Mega Camp. So kind of when you get downloaded on all of that information, um, sometimes applying it and uh, seeing what other people have questions about, um, she's gonna open it up. I'm gonna get those links out to you guys so that while we are all learning, um, that we can come together with our ideas. And I want everybody to just remember that this technology is being built by agents. We need your feedback and we need your participation. So if you haven't if you haven't gone into command if you haven't you know if you're waiting um, and this is the biggest thing that I hear you know I'll wait till it's finished it's never going to be finished and unless you guys get in there and figure out how to use the tools for your business and give your input it's only going to continue to grow and get better I've been watching it for two and a half years now and it's like a little baby uh, to me so. I just want you to know the baby is growing up and I don't want you to miss that the baby is growing up and it'll be in college in a minute and making me millions of dollars. So <laughs> I don't want to keep this a secret. So I want you guys to, um, if, if again, just for selfish reasons, participate and see how it can help you in your business because I, I'm 
telling you, um, as soon as you think about getting involved and you haven't been, you're going to be behind. And I don't want that. So I, I just, um, and this is my last impassioned plea. So when, when we ask you, you know, how can we help you in your business? I'm serious. If I tell you that I can show you something in five minutes that will save you hundreds of dollars, you'd be interested in that, right? So when I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be approaching people in the market city based on the reports that I'm getting. Um, that was in the meeting that we just had. And all I want to do is help. And if I can give you an elevator pitch, and if you can tell me that I can solve it for you, that's going to be the reason why I want you to use command. I'm not trying to disrupt your business, but our business is being disrupted. So if I can, you know, just help in any way, um, I am extremely getting a lot more busy um, by using command right now. So that's why a lot of you who are in the office are not seeing me because I'm actually going on appointments and things. And that is due to my use of the technology, guys. Um, so I'm here and we're all here on the tech committee. And again, uh, another push for if you want to get involved with us, we need people. So thank you and come join us. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. Um, I just want to reflect on what Lisa was saying as well. Command, command, command is a, a great tool. It's getting better every day that we use it. I would encourage, uh, you know, the teams or teams to at least have one member of their team on uh, or to use command, fill it out, get to know it, uh, because eventually down the road, that's where we're going to be. Uh, dot loop's going to go away, things going to go away, we're going to be on command. So get to know it now, get to know it early in its uh, stages that we're in now. So when it really grows, you'll be ready to use it. Uh, all right. So again, join the tech committee. We need help. We need your assistance. Please come uh, on behalf of Lisa, Adam, Beth, myself, and Rob. We thank you very much for joining this meeting today. And uh, if you ever have any questions, please reach out and um, it, it to Amy as well. Please reach out and uh, just ask us and we'll be more than willing to help you. Any questions for anybody? I got a question. When is dot loop going away? <laughs> well, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question, Marsha. If it was if it was me, I would I would probably force everybody's hands to go to command and, and be done with it. But uh, sooner than later, sooner than later. So get to know command sooner than later. Trust me. So when dot loop goes away, green sheets go away. Correct. That is correct. If you know command, you can put the whole process. You can do the whole, whole your whole documentation from start to finish in command right now, and you don't need a green sheet to do that. It will automatically go to Lisa and everybody. If you, it's a very good process. It also tracks your information as well. It keeps you know account of all your information. So, not going to expand on that too much right now. But yes, I haven't used the green sheet. sheet since February. <laughs> what? She has not used the green sheet since February. Cool. And and believe it or not, she gets paid. <laughs> <laughs> Just got paid Tuesday. Bam. <laughs> All right. So, any questions? Nope. All that's right. it. All right, folks. Well, thank you very much. Amy, you have anything? Thank you, guys. You'll go and enjoy the day. Go sell, sell, sell. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Whatever you do. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.